Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, March 13th, 2018, episode 40. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe just a little bit of lulls. And we got a good daily lulls for you today. And today's show is titled, The Truth Behind the Anti-Gun Women's March School Walkout. And you can get show notes at istate.tv slash h o four zero, which is linked in the video description. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Gov Schools Enable Hate, Afrin's Refugee Crisis, CBD Bait and Switch, Keebler Sessions' Gun Hate, and more. But now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. So this first story, well... I'll just say that uh, I've got a lot of uh, personal feelings at uh, attached to this story. Gov schools to become anti-gun political platforms thanks to neo-Marxist organization. Yeah, yep, that's the title I chose. I know I'm being a bit hyperbolic when I describe the organizers of the Women's March as being uh, neo-Marxist, but I'm going with it. I'm, 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 yes, I'm, I'm participating in a bit of the fear porn. Like I said, I didn't say you're not going to get any fear porn on, on headlines you may have missed. I'm just saying you're not going to get nearly as much fear porn. And, uh, I, I think this is something for, for you to uh, make make notice of, as you as you may well know, tomorrow all across America land, there's a whole bunch of public schools out there, aka government schools, that are going to be uh, essentially allowing their schools to become political platforms for this uh, the the organizers of the women's march to quote unquote encourage students to protest your ability to acquire and possess tools of self-defense. In other words, to protest non-government people having guns. So they're basically supporting, which I guess is not a surprise, they're essentially supporting a protest that is calling for the, the accelerated emergence of the police state at the expense of everyone else. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I encourage you to definitely go to the show notes and read the full article that I wrote. I, I believe I, it, it should be on shtfplan.com. I think they're going to pick it up. And I also think the Daily Sheeple might pick it up. Uh, so <laughs> I encourage you to read the, the full article that I wrote, but I'm just going to play just the start of a video here that uh, is from a recording that a school it's 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 a it's a recorded message that a school sent out to the parents of the students in this case the school is the Bethlehem area school district go ahead Uh, it, it's, 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 it's really creepy. It's really bad. I don't have the time in this show to go into the full detail. And I suspect on tomorrow's Is Daily Wednesday that uh, the one true Niz and I may very well be going into a lot more detail about this particular story. Turk Reich's genocidal assault on Afrin, that's Turk Reich's 
genocidal assault, assault on Afrin creates thousands of Kurdish refugees. So, as the Turk Reich continues its assault on the people of Afrin, many Kurds from within the enclave are attempting to flee the now war-torn region. And at least 1,000 civilians have been killed so far by Erdogan's coalition of former IS fighters, other Islamo-fascists, and his own crew of Turkish supremacist nationalists. So while, so while Erdogan, Erdogan's efforts to, I'm going to say, I'm calling it ethnically cleanse the region to replace it with Turk-friendly Arabs and Turkish nationalists, while that continues, the world offers, well, they're just, they're protesting. They're saying, that's not good. Don't do that. That's bad. No other actions other than, that's bad. Don't do it. And, of course, Russia is fully enabling the Turk Reich, and, and they're even rewarding them by delivering or, or, or trying to hasten the delivery of an air, anti-aircraft missile system. And the story is from Ansamad.info. Thousands of Syrian Kurds fleeing Afrin. Thousands of people are fleeing the Syrian Kurdish enclave of Afrin, which has been under attack from Turkish-backed troops for over 50 days. The civilian population is headed towards areas under Syrian government control in the Aleppo province, according to a spokesman for the Kurdish PYD, whose armed wing, the YPG, controls the center of Afrin. CBD oil becomes gun bill after passing both chambers of the Indiana legislature. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting story here because this is a story in which the end result is the the lowering of restrictions on the ability of individuals to acquire and possess tools of self-defense, in this case, guns. So you think, well, you got to be all for that, right? No, this, this not, n not the way it's done. Uh, th this is a story of a bill that was created to legalize the consumption, the purchase and consumption of CBD oil by the quote unquote citizens of the state of Indiana. Indiana legislators thought in their benevolence, it is time for us to allow human beings to purchase and, cons and consume a product that does not harm others. As a matter of fact, doesn't even harm them. As a matter of fact, it actually provides therapeutic uses for the folks. And they've seen to it to, to in their benevolence, lift the criminalization of this, uh, this act that, that's not harming anyone. Well, they wrote the legislation. They passed it in their, in their two chambers of their legislature. And then after it passed during the reconciliation process, they decided to just take out the whole CBD part of the bill and replace it with uh, with 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 gun legislation. Again, it's gun legislation that I may very well favor. But even if I favor it, uh, the fact that that you 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 think it's okay that that somehow this reflects the Republican small R values. Uh, of your 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 uh, I guess Republican democracy, whatever you want to call it, uh, yeah, yeah, that 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 just further illustrates the total arbitrary nature of of the thing that you think has some sort of uh, rule of law uh, boundaries on it. And this is an article from w e w t h r dot com. Uh, let's see, uh, in late January, the Indiana House of Representatives voted 93 to 0 to pass HB 1214, a bill that would legalize CBD oil for thousands of Hoosiers. It got plenty of support in the Senate, too, passing by a 3 to 1 margin. All it needs now is for a joint conference committee to work out some differences in the House and Senate. This is the resolution part. Ah, but... Representative Bill Friend, Republican, rolled his eyes at me when at the author of this uh, 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 article, uh, who asked him, "Hey, what's up with the bill?" He says, "Dude, it looks like someone who knew <laughs> he he looked like someone who knew something he didn't want to know." And he said, "It's a vehicle, a vehicle," and uh, yeah, and he said, "Yeah, it, do it doesn't have anything to do with CBD oil, Al. Nothing, not anymore." 
And at that moment, uh, he realized what Friend was saying. It had been tagged by House leadership as a vehicle bill, the legislation that Friend carefully shepherded through multiple committee hearings and floor votes in the House and the Senate to make CBD oil legal. And the state of Indiana has lost its identity. It has lost its soul. It has become, like I said, a, a gun legislation bill. And I'm going to go to the original article here, and I want to see... Uh, let's see. What is it now? It's, well, I can't find it fast enough. So that's okay. So here, here we go. It, it, what it, what it put in there, SB 33, um, it would allow individuals who can legally possess a firearm to carry a gun onto school property at a church. So long as the church doesn't have a ban against guns. And it would allow Hoosiers to obtain a state gun permit that is free and lasts a lifetime. So, yeah, these are these are good things from my perspective, but uh, the way that they're done, not so cool. Of course, when I say good things, I'm talking about longer leash good things. And if you wanna wanna learn about why it is that that the longer leash is not necessarily a good thing, uh, listen to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander and myself. We have a segment called Longer Leash, and in that segment, we we drive home the point again and again that whenever they give you a longer leash, you better watch. You know, that one hand that's holding the leash that's made it longer, watch where that other hand is. Because <laughs> that other hand may be on another part of your body all of a sudden. That uh, You may have a longer leash, but they, they actually end up with more control over you than they had before. Sessions invokes false fear to justify crackdown on background checks for guns. Really, of all the people that are in government right now, I don't know that I would not put Jeff Sessions at the top of my contender to be placed as an image on a dartboard. I think I think he's got to be right up there right now. Jeff Sessions on a dartboard. Yes, this this is going to work for me. I love this idea. And anybody out there who might be listening, if you are listening, comment on this. If, if you're going to take up the issue of uh, perhaps producing for folks, maybe a dartboard, maybe any kind of target or something that it, it would, it would just, I'm not talking about, you know, personally going after Jeff Sessions. I'm talking about just, just getting some of that vicarious or that, that well, I guess it's not vicarious. Get, get some of that hostility worked out, you know, in a, in a more constructive way, which you're not actually harming individuals. You just harm a piece of paper. This guy's on the top of that list. And this story just, just, just brings him all the higher on that list. Exploiting the psychological terrorism of the American political quote left whatever that means, they self-identify. Uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions commands that U.S. attorneys more aggressively prosecute people who knowingly lie when they apply for a background check to approve a gun purchase. You know, I used to do a local news publication. I've actually done a, a couple different ones. And, and the last time when I was the editor of a local news publication, I would, I would literally not cover the stories, uh, the police reports that I would get regarding people who were being targeted, uh, arrested for lying on the background checks. <laughs> Often the people weren't lying. They just didn't answer a question right, whatever the case might be. But, 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 but they, they were definitely pursued. Now, the story... The article says that, you know, people are not criminally pursued. Yeah, and the place that I was covering, yeah, they were they were kind of aggressively pursued. And that was in a very, quote unquote, pro gun county. And yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. The authoritarian nature. That's that's the most uh frustrating part. The 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 what would you would what you would consider the natural air, uh, allies for let's say a libertarian type person in in the area of guns as far as being pro gun ownership the the natural ally is the conservative but the conservative is such a law and order freak they they it's a, it's a borderline worship of police and the military even though the police and the military are the ones that make gun control laws possible the, the reaction of Jeff Sessions to this uh, this this Parkland shooting is to advance the fear porn narrative to to basically join in the psychological terrorism of the left 
which is trying to convince children that they're that they're somehow in a, in mortal danger, that there's violence everywhere, and we have to do something about it. So Jeff Sessions, what does he do? He picks up on this. This is just from the Washington Post. He says, no child should fe have to fear going to school or walking the streets of their neighborhood. You're right, they shouldn't. Uh, I'm not saying that bad things don't happen, but they're incredibly remote. No child has any legitimate fear of going to school outside of bullies. They're not going to shoot them. Uh, they, they may do physical harm to them. And, and really, even, even more, the, the indoctrination garbage that the teacher are putting in their, teachers putting in their heads, they should fear that more. And walking down the streets of their neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, uh, depending on the neighborhood, most neighborhoods in America, now you, you have no real fear. So, so using the fear porn of the American left and, and by extension, engaging in psychological terrorism against the children of this land, Jeff Sessions is going to use that to try to crack down on people that are applying for uh, you know, going through the background checks to see if they can get a gun. This is going to have a chilling effect, of course, because there's going to be a certain percentage of people who they have nothing to fear from from filling out a background check. But they're going to wonder, you know, what if I do something wrong? You know, I might be prosecuted. I might go to jail, even if I've done something. And that's a real possibility. You could. You could. Uh, put a wrong answer and end up going to jail. I mean, might not be likely, but you know, you're not going to think logically necessarily. You're going to think with fear as a lot of folks do. And so Jeff Sessions is basically uh, advancing the fear of gun agenda, the psychological terrorism agenda, because it happens to empower his law and order command and control ways. In other words, Jeff Sessions you are a piece of shit. E-threads will enable electronics to be embroidered into smart fabrics. See, there's there's cool stuff going on. Uh, Asamina Kiorti? <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce your name, buddy. It's a cool name, though. Writes in Smithsonian Magazine about efforts to create smart fabrics that will have the electronic components woven or embroidered right into them. The electronics components will be part of the fabric through embroidery using e-threads. And this is from the Smithsonian Magazine. Smart fabrics are already available for purchase, such as leggings that provide gentle vibrations for easier yoga, t-shirts that track player performance, etc., etc. My work at the Electroscience, not my work personally, my work at the Electroscience Laboratory of the Ohio State University, I'm a Penn State uh, Nittany Lion fan, so I definitely, I wouldn't be caught dead working at Ohio State University. I just needed to add that. I know it's a total distraction. My work at the Electroscience Laboratory of the Ohio State University aims to make antennas and power sources that are equally flexible and washable. Specifically, we're embroidering electronics directly into fabrics using conductive therapy th threads, which we call e-threads. Okay, I just got to go to the next story here because I got to make sure that we get our daily lulls. Here is our daily lulls. I bumped it up one story just to make sure we got to it. Watch adult entertainment and get paid in cryptos. No, really, really, seriously. In exchange for time and data, you can get paid in cryptocurrency. The name of the cryptocurrency is Vice Industry Token. The token exists on an... Adult entertainment, uh, that's porn to everyone else, blockchain that will reward you with cryptos for watching videos on its site, as well as for allowing the platform to gather information about your viewing habits. So if you want to become a professional mm, adult entertainment watcher, well, then VIT is the place for you. I just want to say this is not an endorsement of watching pornography or adult entertainment but this is an interesting story in that here here we're seeing the emergence uh, for for those of you out there that fear ai they fear automation and robots and they're gonna take our gerbs and you know 
this is just yet another example of of the emergence of an unexpected job that you couldn't predict what's going to happen. And and what do they want really in return? They want your information. So a new cryptocurrency, this is from Gizmodo, a new cryptocurrency and porn platform is banking on you wanting, I'm not going to read that, Vice Industry Token Inc. hopes the offering, that offering consumers, content creators, and distributors free money in the form of its proprietary cryptocurrency will help shake up the adult entertainment industry. I got to get to a couple quick stories here. China moving back to more command and control style market management. It appears that China is set to enact greater control over its market, a move that is sure in time to give advantage to the nation states that allow for more open markets. 3D printing homes in 24 hours is a reality that's closer than you think. In the near future, building a new home may be as easy as printing an out an airline boarding pass. At South by Southwest Today News Story, a Y com Combinator backed charity that works to build houses for people in developing nations, an icon, a robotics construction company in Austin, Texas, unveiled what is believed to be the first 3D printed house that is fully up to code and permitted for people to inhabit. South Dakota sees a doomsday city emerge on an old military base. A company called Vivos is building a massive complex of bunkers in South Dakota for only $25,000. You can be part of that new city. EU aims to rein in crowdfunding in effort to halt democratization of finance. Yes, it wants to stop crowdfunding as a source of financing. Beep, beep. I, I don't have the sound effect on today. I'm trying something new. I do. I will have a closing sound effect, but uh, I got rid of the background. I got a couple, I got some feedback from some folks that uh, they were like, nah, I don't really need that background. So I tried this without a background and uh, we'll see how that goes. But that is the end of the 20 minutes. So that's where I stop. I mean, I didn't get into great detail with the other stories. I think I, I spent too much time on the first story, I think. But honestly, I could have spent the whole 20 minutes easily talking about that first story. Uh, but that's all we have uh, today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 13th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube videos. Or go to istate.tv slash h o four o. You can also find our audio podcast, which contains just the 20 minutes. It doesn't contain the introduction, and it doesn't contain this part. It just contains pure 20 minutes of headlines. You can find that on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. You can also search for headlines you may have missed. It'll come up as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, you miss the opening of the show. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear... If you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, look for the guy with the AR-15. And if you do friend request me, you can just follow me if you like, or you can friend request me. If you do friend request me as a result of the show, ping me and let me know. Especially if maybe you're not, maybe, maybe you think maybe I wouldn't otherwise accept your friend request. I'll be a little bit more, uh, I'll tend more to accept a friend request from folks who have come through the show than, than I might otherwise. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Don't forget to join me tonight. Tonight we're actually going to have Is Daily Monday on Tuesday. So <laughs> as it so happened, things came up the last three Mondays in a row, counting yesterday, we did not have the Is Daily Monday show. So instead, so we're going to miss the Is Daily Tuesday show this week. And instead of doing his daily Tuesday. We're doing his daily Monday, even though it's Tuesday. That's just the way it is. But we're going to be doing the show with Professor Rambo around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. And the link to that page is in the video description as well. Tonight's show is titled, Why Does the FBI Hate Cops? As always, remember that those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.